Hello, teens! Welcome to Destined Nation. I'm Pastor Jodel, and this is Quench Your Thursday. And every Thursday, we're talking about being a worshiper of Christ Jesus. So, worshipers of Christ, let us all worship the Lord. Lord, you deserve all the glory and praises. We lift your name on high, Jesus. Sing your love. Your love is extravagant. Your friendship. So intimate Sing it again to Him Your love Is extravagant Your friendship Jesus So In a secret place I'll find I'll find a moving To the rhythms of your grace Your fragrance is intoxicated In a secret place Your love Is extravagant Your friendship, Lord your friendship so intimate, so intimate, your love, Lord, love is extravagant, let's lift up our hands, spread wide in the Sin. No good love have I ever known. You consider me a friend. Thank you, Jesus. Spread wide in the arms of Christ. It's the love that covers sin. No good love. Capture my heart again. Oh, 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 oh. Let's sing it for the last time. Your love is extravagant. Your love is extravagant. Your friendship, your friendship. So intimate. Amen and amen. Hello, teens. Colleen here, and this is our verse of the week. We will play a game, so remember what I'll say. Acts 2, verse 4 in ESV says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Again, Acts 2 verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. For the last time, teens, Acts 2 verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now the game begins. I hope you remember the verse because I will be removing some words and you have to fill in the blanks. Type your answers in our comment section below. Let's start. Acts 2 means, let's continue. And they were all filled with the Spirit and began to speak in other as the Spirit gave them. Again, 
and they were all filled with the spirit and began to speak in other as the spirit gave them. Did you get all those things? Awesome! This has been the verse of the week and your destiny for Christ. Hello, wonderful destination! I'm Pastor Aika and it's time for our Sing His Praise. We are still, still in Exodus 33. Last week, we learned the presence of God brings satisfaction. The, when the presence of God is with us, he gives us rest. Now, let's continue in this lesson. Exodus 33, 14 to 20, it says, The Lord replied, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of of the earth so the in other translation god says my presence will go with you i myself will go with you and i will give you peace in ncv it says i myself will go with you and i will give you victory you see when we are in the presence of god if god is with us in everything that we do god will give you victory god will give you rest rest here does not mean to take a nap in afternoon nap rest here means shalom or peace peace from enemies security it's a state of well-being or a place in creation still when we are in the presence of god there is peace Moses understand the reality of God's presence. He understood that when he God is not with him, he will not be successful. He will not be a, a successful leader. He will not be able to lead the Israelites. You see, 40 years the Israelites wandered away. But because God is with them, God provided their needs. And God did not forsake his people. Moses did not want to take one step far from the presence of God. Did you do the same thing? Just like Moses means, do you love to be in the presence of God? Do you always acknowledge His presence in everything that you do? When you wake up, when you study, you do your lessons, or take your exams, or go to church, or share the gospel, do you acknowledge His presence? Teens, you see, there is peace when we share the gospel. So it's important that we bring our friends, we encourage and invite our friends to church, to our online services, in our Go group, in our online, because there is peace. When a person receives salvation, when they accepted Jesus in their life, there is fullness of joy. There is difference being a child of God, having a relationship with God, to those who do not have Jesus in their life. There is joy, the face kept shining to those who have Jesus in their life. So teens, always seek the presence of the Lord and invite your friends, share the gospel so that they may also receive salvation and seek the presence of God. There is no better place than being in God's presence. I hope you learned something today and I hope to see you in our online services, drive-in services this week. And remember, you are destined for Christ. Hi teens! I'm Pastor Jadel and this is Compass. Today is Quencher Thursday and every Thursday we are talking about worship. Today, let's talk about ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And this is our spiritual act of worship. Romans 12 verse 1 to 2. I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. 
Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Number one, we are to choose to offer our bodies to God. In the New Living Translation, the same verse reads, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, teens, our first offering to the Lord is ourselves. Paul is actually leaving the people of Rome to present or give their bodies to God as a living sacrifices because of what Christ has done for them. Can you think about what the Lord Jesus has done for you? He saved you from all of your sins. He has washed as clean, as white as snow. We do not have a past, but we have a great future. And a lot more things. He changed our lives. He changed our future. He blessed us. He blessed our families. And for all of those wonderful things that God has done, our way to worship Him is to present our bodies to Him as a living sacrifice and to live holy lives for the Lord. Now, to live a holy life means to live a life that is set apart for the purposes of God. That means we live our lives to bring glory and honor to Him. We live our lives away from sin, the things, the sins that God has already erased in our lives and from the sins that He has already forgiven us from. We have been freed from all of this and so that we may serve the living God. It's very important that we always remember the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross so that we will never go back to that past anymore. And so we choose to offer our bodies to Him. We live clean lives, pure lives in Jesus' name. We offer our bodies as living sacrifices to the Lord. That means we constantly desire to be a part of the work of God, to do things that brings glory and honor to God. And we don't use our body or the members of our body to sin or cause people to sin. Living for God means to not follow the pattern of this world. In Romans 12 verse 2, it says here, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. And so we need to keep our lifestyle checked at all times, that we are evaluating ourselves according to the word of God, if the life that we live is a life that we are living for God, or do we have the pattern of this world as our pattern for our life? We need to keep our lives devoted to the Lord. In Romans 6 verses 1 to 4, it says here, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. We do not have a past, just a great future, a new life with God. And we cannot continue in sin anymore. Why? Because we died in those sins. We have been made alive in Christ Jesus. And so daily, we also make a decision to renew our mind according to the Word of God so that we will know what is His will for our lives. Every day, let us fill our hearts with the Word so that we will be filled with the knowledge of the will of God for our lives. It is important that we live our lives for God and not basing it according to the latest trend, the latest fad, what is cool, what we see in, in the social media, right? Our lives must not be 
dictated by TikTok or our games or whatever it is that we do, our Facebook or Instagram, right? Whatever we see people doing, this is not our life. And that should not be the pattern of our lives, right? God is telling us to renew our minds according to the Word of God and let us live our lives holy and pleasing to the God who saved us from all of those sins. And, though, and so we know that that is our spiritual act of worship. That is how we worship God, by living our lives for Him. So not only do we sing to the Lord, we worship the Lord with songs and psalms and hymns and praises, but we also worship Him with the way we live our lives. Worship is a lifestyle. We live our lives for God every day, and we choose to live a life that pleases the Lord, right? Let your life song be a song that worships the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And right now, we lift to you all of these awesome, wonderful teens. Lord, I pray that we will always make a decision to live our lives as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to you. And let us worship you with the way we live our lives every day. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for the new life. Thank you that we no longer have a past, just a great future because of your sacrifice and your love for us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, teens, for being here with us at Destination. See you again tomorrow, 5 o'clock. God bless you.